Oh, hey. I just got back from observing a little boy in kindergarten named Camden. Um, he's in speech therapy now for a velopharyngeal closure impairment, so he has hypernasal resonance. And he also has a few, like, speech sound errors in his speech, like with um, plosives and fricatives. Those were the uh, target phonemes in the therapy session, as well as some of the goals they're working on. Um, yeah, he's able to produce some sounds like <coughs> or neck scat sounds, as the clinician calls them. Um, but he has trouble producing some stops like b, g. He has trouble building up the interoral air pressure because it all comes out of his nose. Um, so that's some of the goals in therapy. Yeah, his speech is mostly intelligible. The severity of his um, condition wasn't specified, but he did get velopharyngeal flap surgery a few years ago. And um, his mother was also observing the session, so there was a lot of support there, which was really great. Oh yeah, and the treatment session, session started with like articulation therapy in the area of plosives, and then it moved to um, a mix of like plosive and fricative sounds. The clinician had him build sentences and repeat words. She also had um, a little recorder and had him record some words for auditory feedback on how he sounded. And she also brought out a mirror for visual feedback to show him like what his articulators looked like when he was properly producing said target phonemes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she also had like a stick with a feather attached at the top of it. And she had him hold the stick up with the feather in front of his mouth and make sounds like p, p, in order to show him like the buildup of interoral air pressure. When the feather moves, it shows him that um, that's where the um, air needs to exit. And she also, she also had this clear plastic tube that connected from his ear to his like nostril. So when the top of the um, tube got cloudy, that showed him that there's um, extra air coming out of his nose instead of his mouth. And that also gave auditory feedback um, because when the air exits, it like quite literally can be a little bit loud. So it can, oh, I need to fix my structure, can give him that reminder. In Ann Coomer's article titled Speech Therapy for Errors Secondary to Cleft Palate and Velopharyngeal Dysfunction, she mentions that speech therapy techniques for this population don't differ all that much compared to um, standard articulation therapy techniques. So the purpose of this article was to inform readers about when it is appropriate to administer speech therapy, which is usually recommended for this population either after three years of age and at, or post-surgery or just post-surgery if, you know, if it happened after three years of age. Um, and for, she also mentions um, the use of the listening tube as well as the uh, visual feedback and tactile feedback with the mirror and having them touch their own neck or, you know, um, observe you like neck sounds or teeth sounds, things like that in the areas of plosive and fricative sounds. Um, it's mentioned that excess nasal emission can't be corrected with speech therapy and that an actual operation or prosthetic is needed to correct the structure. Yeah, after reading this article and observing um, the session, it really helped me to understand why the clinician used the technique, these techniques specifically for Camden, and she utilized the listening tube and mirror for feedback and used standard articulation therapy to target uh, the goals of his therapy, which is to get him to correctly produce those phonemes as well as reduce hypernasal resonance while producing speech. It was really fun.